Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt. Welcome back to How to Pass the CISSP Exam with the help of Star Trek's Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock. And today's episode from Domain 6, Security Assessment and Testing. And hopefully you've been through my other videos and you understand my take on the difference between subjective or qualitative reasoning versus objective and quantitative reasoning. So Uhura is a subject. She is playing a Vulcan harp, which is an object. And the music she plays, if it's good or not, depends on what the subject likes, what they feel, um, their opinion. But the number of knobs on this thing is not my opinion. There are four knobs. There are 30 strings. So that's, uh, that's just based in fact versus opinions. So Mr. Spock is going to try to factually prove parts of this exam uh, as correct, but typically it's, it's easier to prove, especially with this test, answers wrong. So you get one question, four answers, and we try to do process of elimination. And Spock's going to do that. He's going to say, well, it's not A or it's not D. And uh, Kirk will be left with some amount of answers. And based on his experience, his hunches, he's going to try and pick the right answer. And we know that the ISO, which we get test questions on, is like the Federation, and it's a word. It comes from the Greek that means equal, and it helps us all get along to, uh, together and help share the internet together. So today's question is on penetration testing, which some students report getting at least a dozen questions on penetration tests. Let's, uh, Captain Kirk, read that to Mr. Spock. Spock. A penetration test is authorized and currently underway. A tester sends a TCP SYN on port 80 to a system and receives a SYNAC. Which of the following is most likely to assume? A. The system is listening on port 443 as well. Is that likely to assume, Mr. Spock? Well, probably, Captain. Actually, port 80 is associated with web traffic or HTTP. That is a clear text protocol. It is much more popular today to encrypt that over SSL or TLS. And that port number changes. HTTPS, the encrypted version, defaults to port 443. You say default. Can I change these points? Affirmative, Captain. You can run any protocol over any port. These are just default ports and the most common. So it is likely to assume A could be true. It could be, Captain. B, the system is a web server. Didn't you just say that port 80 is associated with web traffic by default, if I may use your words? Correct, Captain. Port 80 defaults to web traffic, so it is a likely assumption. The system is a proxy web. Could that be true? It could, Captain. Actually, that could be true as well. It's often that a company does not let a outside machine talk directly to their servers and often put some type of proxy in the middle. And that would also listen on that port. Affirmative, Captain. D, the system is a live host. Oh, affirmative, Captain. In fact, that's the only way they would get a response back unless, of course, it was a proxy server for it. Uh, so all of these could be true. Affirmative, Captain. Spock, I'm used to you as eliminating at least A or B is wrong. Hmm. Spock, explain to me a little bit more about TCP and port numbers and the SYNAC thing. Well, Captain, if you recall, a computer is based in hardware. There's an operating system that runs on it, and then there are applications that run on it. We identify the hardware with a MAC address. These are only locally significant, don't make sense to any global system. When you communicate with a host, you generally know it by its IP address to know the host and the port number to identify the application. Aha. Uh -huh. So the port numbers that we're talking about here, or TCP port numbers, yes, they could be TCP or UDP. And that information is stored in the TCP header. This information right here. So there would be a field for port numbers, source and destination port numbers. What about the SYN and SYNAC? Ah, that is also a field in this header. Could you explain to me a little bit more about how this works, Mike? Of course, you have to. These are the fields in the TCP header. The fields that we care about for today's question are the port numbers, particularly it's sent at destination port 80, 
and then the flags, which identify the state information. The flags we saw were sin and ack. Uh -huh. So it, just speaking of port numbers, what, what do these do? You said port 80 is associated with web traffic and 443 with encrypted web? Correct, Captain. Actually, with 16 bits, we could have over 65,000. In fact, 65035 to be exact. Spock, I know a little bit of the math. Wouldn't it be 65036 starting at port zero? Port zero is never used, Captain. But ports one through 1023 are privileged, meaning you need to have privileged access to the machine. And they are well known. They are associated with applications. For instance, 25 is associated with the simple mail transfer protocol. Port 53 associated with DNS and the ports that we've talked about today. Uh huh. How deep do they go in the test with more port numbers? Should I know more about this? Only a few common port numbers, but they're very likely to ask at least these four. All right. Thank you, Spock. And what about these flags again? Can you get a little more detailed? Sure. The flags specify the state of a connection. So remember, UDP is stateless. We don't know what's the beginning of a question or beginning of a conversation or the end or whatever. But here in TCP, we know the beginning state, the connected state, the termination state. Now, there are a number of flags, but for the sake of this test, they sent a SYN and then received a SYNAC, both of these flags sent. I see. So they send a synchronize with me request and then the host synchronized and acknowledged their synchronization request. Is that correct? Very good, Captain. Yes. When you start a connection with a host, you send the SYN flag and you pick an initial sequence number. The server, if listening on that port, will say synchronize with me and they pick an initial sequence number, but they acknowledge yours. So in this case, he sent sequence number 2300. He acknowledged the next one he expected to see. Okay, Spock. But suppose they weren't listening on that port. What other conditions could happen? Captain, there are a number of things that could happen, but at a high level, if you send a SYN to a destination machine on port 80, there are four basic replies. You could, as we got in this case, say that we got a SYN act. The system is alive and listening on port 80. A reset act is if they are alive, but not listening on port 80. If you get an ICMP destination unreachable, that means either the system is not alive it is misconfigured or being filtered through some type of router or firewall. Or you may get nothing back. And that certainly guarantees that there is a system filtering replies, typically a firewall. Aha, but we got a SYN X. So that just means the system is alive and listening on port 80. But that doesn't really mean it's web traffic though, does it, Spock? Couldn't somebody try to fool somebody? Wouldn't it be possible that someone would set up a decoy server just to listen on, or perhaps even for some reason pick an application and change it to port 80? They could, Captain. They would need system level privileges, but if they had administrative or root level access, they would be able to configure that. In fact, such systems are sometimes termed honeypots, where they lure people in. But to make an effective honeypot, you'd think they'd want more than just listening on port 80 they would have to have an HTTP service running behind it. Could we tell by sending a SYN whether or not there is an HTTP service behind it? Negative, Captain. You would need to do more and send HTTP requests. So if we received, as we did in this question, a SYN ACK, the only thing I can actually state for a fact is that the system is alive and listening on port 80. It does not mean it's a web server. That's true, Captain. Spock, let me see that question again. A penetration test is authorized and currently underway. A tester sends a TCP SYN on port 80 to a system and receives a SYNAC. Which of the following is most likely to assume? Spock, I'm going with D. I have a hunch. This is the most likely to assume. Correct, Captain, but it is not guaranteed. There could still be a proxy server that would actually respond for. Spock, that's not one of the answers. 
Now we haven't got time. We're picking D and moving on. And yes, port 80 is associated with web traffic, but without further investigation of listening some type of HTML response, you can't really say that it is a, a web server. People do sell, set up honeypots. Now, a low interaction honeypot would just do this. A high interaction honeypot would actually have an HTTP service behind it. But whatever the case is, just getting a SYNAC back on port 80 does not guarantee this is a web server, but it very likely guarantees that the system is a live host. All right, I hope that helps some people there. Uh, as I said, some people tell me they get beat up quite a bit on penetration tests, uh, penetration testing on the CISSP exam. If you'd like to know more, I would love to see you in one of my live classes. I do a live online once a month, and you could uh, find out my schedule either by writing sales at internetworkdefense.com, or you could uh, go to our website. And um, we also sell recorded copies of uh, my class each year. And I also now start teaching or sending a, a practice exam, 50 question practice exam that you go over by yourself and then schedule a time for me to uh, review one on one. And that's been going very good for people, especially people who just take the uh, recorded class. And um, that's only 50 questions. If you want to pass your test, I highly, highly recommend that you go through some practice exams, uh, hundreds of them. And the best that I know of are done by Clement Dupuy at CC Cure. And uh, you can find him at ccure.tree. All right. Thank you very much, and may you all live long and prosper. Look forward to seeing you again on our next adventure.